Hello and welcome back to the Middling Along podcast. My guest this time is Mona Smith. She took up powerlifting at the ripe age of 50 after years of back pain and two years later she'd won herself a Commonwealth bronze medal. I'm really looking forward to uh, to hearing from her. Welcome to the podcast Mona. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So how on earth did you decide I'm going to take up powerlifting? What, what was the sort of the impetus for, for that well, it, it kind of just happened, but I would say that about five, five, five years ago, I realized that I was, you know, heading into to middle aged and, you know, I have history of osteoporosis and, and diabetes in my family. I wanted to mm-hmm. try and stop that in its tracks as much as I can. And I was overweight and unhappy and decided I needed to do something about it. So I started doing the body coach program, which a lot of people have. have oh, the, the, Joe Wicks one. Very, the Joe Wicks one. <laughs> okay. Yes, yes, that's it. Um, and lost a lot of weight. And, and, and part of the training on that program was was lifting weights. And I'd never done that before. And I found that I really, really enjoyed it. So so after that program and a couple of stops and starts and I I then decided to go into a, a gym which I'd never really done before you know previously he did only I'd tried a gym membership you know a number of years ago and I was pointed to the treadmill and the rowing machine and the <laughs> you go. Islands, and off, off you go and I thought oh, this is just <laughs> it can be very intimidating I don't know about you I find gyms terribly intimidating well it wasn't really intimidating I just found that the the exercises that I was told to do were very, very boring. Yeah. So I didn't go. So that was the end of that. <laughs> um, but having done the the Joe Wicks program and started lifting some weights, I found that that was really, really empowering. I, I felt much stronger and, yeah, gained, gained confidence. So I went to a gym, started lifting more and got myself a personal trainer. Mm-hmm. At outside of the gym who who I went to once a fortnight and you know I thought I wanted to be skinny because that's what everyone wants to be right that's that's, that's, that's what, what the media tells us that's we what media want. tells us absolutely <laughs> and you know I was part of a number of you know fitness forums on Facebook and groups and stuff like that and and everyone seemed to want to do these fitness photo shoots and mm. I'm I'm a very goal oriented person I needed a goal to work towards so I thought that's what I wanted to do. So, so I did that and I'm glad I did. Uh, but then once I'd done that, I said to my trainer, look, I don't enjoy being skinny. It makes me miserable. Um, I can't eat enough food. <laughs> you know, I'm weak. <laughs> you know, I need to be stronger. What can I do? So she said, you should really do powerlifting because you are very strong and, and I think you do well at it. And she said, why don't you? And I also said, I, I, I need a goal, but also I'm 50 this year. So I want to do something a bit out there. Any ideas? <laughs> so she said, well, why don't you sign up for a powerlifting competition? Wow. Just like that. I, <laughs> I can't do that. You know, I'm not strong enough to go into a competition. And she said, well, it would just be for fun. You know, you'll enjoy it. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, exactly. So I thought, right, I'm doing this. So, yeah, I... I joined the the British Powerlifting Association Federation and which is part of the the IPF and did my first competition in Slough, uh, which was a, a regional one for the for the South Midlands. I got the qualifying total for the British Championship, so that was my my first competition. But but you'd trained with your personal trainer with that. I in, trained in with mind. my personal yeah. trainer. Yeah. And how what was that sort of lead in time then for you to sort of get competition ready? Um, I competed I think it was in in June or July. I remember it was very, very hot. And I started I guess training for about twelve weeks before that. So quite intensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I, I was absolutely shocked. You know, I, I read on the on the form, you know, what the qualifying total was for the British Championships. And I went, oh, hang on a minute, I've just done that. And I went to one of the coaches or the uh, 
um, officials then said, is this right? And he went, yeah, you should go. So I thought, <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me do that. So, yeah, later that year, October, I think it was, I went to, that was in 2018, I went to Belfast and competed in the British Championship. Just like that. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then May 19 uh, was my next competition, which was the All England Women's, where I came third and was also selected to join the England team for the Commonwealth in September 19 in Canada. So that, uh, I don't know, how did, did you just kind of get sort of swept up on this sort of wave of enthusiasm and yeah, kind of novelty? And the, and... Exactly, and, and the powerlifting community is very, very inclusive. Everyone supports each mm. other, we're all cheering each other on, and, you know, although we are competing, we're competing more with ourselves or against ourselves than, than other people. And I, I guess some people would find that kind of surprising that they would feel like that would have a very sort of macho sort of mm. culture and mm. that they wouldn't be welcome especially as a sort of a kind of a yeah. newbie or whatever but it, it sounds like that that's sort of very very wrong. supportive very helpful and you know because I was such a novice the you know a, a number of other power lifters who were more more seasoned than me and had been doing this for years you know gave me hints and tips and and you know were really helping me along the way on, on competition day, which was fantastic. And so um, Commonwealth Games, you said, was then, was when? Yeah, the Commonwealth Championship were in September 2019 in right. St. John's, Newfoundland in Canada. Wow. And how was that experience? It was fantastic. You know, we were a quite quite a large team from, from, from England and, you know, made some great friends along the way. We were there for... Uh, a number of days uh, competing against uh, other Commonwealth countries, of course. And um, yeah, just ha had a blast and, you know, talked to a lot of people who, and a lot of women in particular, who had come into powerlifting at a later age, like myself. Interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, I was going to ask whether there was any kind of sort of I guess people sort of looking a slightly askance at, at, at you kind of your age, but it sounds like you are not not alone. No, absolutely not. And and the beauty of things like weightlifting and powerlifting is that you compete in groups based on your age and your body weight. So you're competing against other people who are similar to you. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I would never be competitive against a a 25 year old for example or somebody who weighs you know another 50 percent more body weight than myself they are you know typically yeah. much, much stronger so, so okay. that wouldn't so and for that reason it is a lot more accessible because it's based on your age and and your body weight and do you mind then if I ask what is the sort of the age bracket within which you yeah compete? It, it goes up in tens so for Masters 1, which is Masters are sort of the, the older age groups, goes from the age of 40 to 49. Masters 2 is then 50 to, to 59, which I am. Mm -hmm. And then 60 to 69, etc. Okay. Yeah, there was, there was even a lady there from India who was in her 80s. That's incredible. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. So, you know, there, there's, there's no reason why you can't start this at, at a at a late, later stage in your life and you know yeah. I'm not unique in that you know there are there are a lot, lot of people out there like myself who've taken up fitness in in later life and also have taken up powerlifting itself you know later on yeah so if I'm going to circle back to sort of where you started again so you said mm. that you sort of started out I guess using sort of quite small hand weights yeah so I do some sort of strength training and I've sort of plateaued at using um five kilogram weights dumbbells yeah yeah so did you sort of progress from that kind of thing very very sort of in a linear way and then sort of jump up to the powerlifting yeah. stuff I, I would say I, I progressed fa fairly quickly because I, I started off training at home with a few dumbbells and I had a, a barbell set and stuff from from Argos which was fine for for a <laughs> while but then very quickly reached a point where that just wasn't heavy enough and it wasn't challenging mm. enough to, to use that which meant that I had to go to a, a gym and and yeah mix, mix with all the 
or the guys that are there because you know there, there there still tends to be a lot less of us women there lifting weights but you know then I didn't find them too intimidating you know I'm um, mm. Just put my headphones on and get on with it, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I guess there is a sort of a, there's a safety element there, isn't there? Once you get over a certain amount of weight, you need somebody who's assisting you, um, sort of spotting, I don't know, is that what you Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and depending on the equipment in the gym as well, there's quite often safety bars on, on, on things as well that you can set to, mm-hmm. if, if you need to, to drop a bar off your shoulders on squats, you can do that. You know, there's often on a bench there's safety bars as well that will stop the uh, the bar from crushing your chest if if you can't get it back up again good to know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you, did you you said you just kind of started out with a personal trainer did you then progress mm. onto a sort of a specialist trainer that was sort of working with powerlifting yes yes um um uh, when when I signed up for the to to join the England team for the Commonwealth, I also got myself a trainer who specialises more in in powerlifting. So so that that was that was really helpful. My trainer I had before that also went on maternity leave. So I now train solely with with, with Aaron, who's my my powerlifting trainer. Yeah. And do you have you sort of managed to get any sort of help with funding for that? No, not not a, no. not at all. No powerlifting is all self-funded so even being part of the the England squad going to the Commonwealth we had to pay for our own kit and our own training and and everything else so did you have to fund your travel as well or was the travel yeah no travel we also had to fund so yeah did a a, a just giving thing to for for people to, to sponsor me to do that which was really helpful because it yeah it's 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 a lot to fund yourself and presumably then a lot of the competing during the sort of the pandemic period has, has not been possible no there, there were there were no competitions last year uh, there have been a couple this year I've only done one this year and I'm just going to concentrate on my training now and, and then see what happens next year yeah. so you but you're not ruling out sort of uh I'm not ruling out competing again but um because there's been so much stop start and things like that over the the last 18 months with you know regards to to training so I don't have a setup at home Mm -hmm. Um, you know I have to go to the gym to train so when they were all closed you know there was very little I could do so I just want to concentrate on you know getting stronger and and before I um, compete again yeah and do you feel differently about yourself now than you did those sort of four or five years ago Definitely. Um, I have a lot more energy, feel much more confident in myself, both on, a, I would say, an emotional level as well as a physical level. I am a lot stronger, obviously. I can pick up stuff and carry it around. And, you know, <laughs> whereas before, and going back to my, my, my back problem issues, I, I had a disc removed from my spine in 2009. It's a, it had comp- completely crumbled, so I spent years before that with 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 back issues as you alluded to at the beginning so it it probably started in my teens to be fair I can remember going to college and having a a prolapse disc at that point so I've had you know years of problems with my back which then culminated in this discectomy that I had in 2009 and um, around that time I couldn't even lift a a bag of shopping and uh, yeah so do you, you had a sort of a, presumably a period of sort of rehab and recovering yes. from that yeah. to kind yeah. of get through before. So, I mean, do you, since you've sort of started strength training and kind of that progressing that, mm. you've had sort of no sort of back issues or sort of? No, no back issues, no. And I'm obviously very careful with how I lift when I train. Mm. And, you know, every everyone should be. <laughs> Because it's very important to have the right form, otherwise why you, can why you easily, go to the gym and you have people who know what they're doing to uh, easily to get you. injuries. Yeah. yeah. So if you know, my, my tip is if if you want to start, I don't know, powerlifting, weightlifting, whatever it is, strength training, invest in having a personal trainer at least at the beginning for a little while to make sure that you're lifting correctly because it's so easy to to get injured the right form and uh, yeah I guess it's quite a sort of it's quite a technical skill to acquire that we don't 
yeah we don't sort of lift things in that way in our, in our kind of daily functional movements it's a very that's right. specific yeah. way of lifting weight isn't it yeah so that's that's well worth the investment <laughs> any other tips for people who might be listening to this and thinking yes i'm going to give it a go or feeling inspired do it <laughs> absolutely do it you know wh- whatever find out you know try a number of things i would say you know powerlifting mm. may not be for you but you know whatever you want to do to to get fitter healthier wh- whatever your goal is weight lose weight or whatever um find out what works for you what keeps you motivated because if it's not fun you're not going to do it are you no, exactly so yeah it's got to be need to find what works for you really joyful and the, then yeah. that kind of gets you gets you excited gets you want actually wanting to do it rather than doing it um as a means to an end to yeah. uh and feeling yeah. guilt if you don't do it <laughs> that's it that's it so you know you need to find what what makes you happy what what motivates you so if you don't know what that is then try a few things mm. I'm really kind of heartened to sort of hear how inclusive that community is. Have you Mm. sort of made powerlifting buddies of sort of similar age and that are you kind of hang out with now? Yeah. So um, the, the, the other ladies that I lifted with in the Commonwealth, we, we, we became quite close and, and, you know, we have a couple of us have met up since then and, you know, we're keeping regular contact. So that's, that's fantastic. But, yeah. you know, even wh- wh- wherever you go to any competition, you know, everyone's talking to everyone and, you know, cheering each other on. So, yeah, no, it's fab. And I think sort of certainly for me this this past year where I've learned a lot about sort of midlife and menopause and the sort of yeah. uh, more and more this kind of topic of strength training coming up about, you know, how critical it is at this time in our lives to focus on building that strength and Mm. you know Mm. the weight bearing the sort of the how good it is for kind of our bone health and yeah all of those things I just feel like there's you know we really don't we don't get that information unless it seems like we go and sort of seek that out and it's so important and it could really help so many people to live better yeah um you know, even just do it, you know, they don't all have to go out and be powerlifters, but even just doing that little bit of strength training and kind yeah. of understanding what the sort of the knock on benefits are all through later life. That's it. Yeah. For, and for a, for a long, for a long time after I started uh, strength training and, and powerlifting, my uh, menopause symptoms got a lot better. I, d- I didn't have so many symptoms, you know, the hot flashes did, didn't come and I was thinking clearer. Sadly, they, they came back again with, with, with a vengeance. So there's, there certainly was, it was a big difference. I didn't notice at first. I think I said to my trainer, <laughs> I don't actually think I've had any symptoms now for a few weeks. And she went, that's good. So, so help with that. And, and as you say, bon- bone density is, you know, a big plus. I I haven't had any scans to see. Mm. I was going to ask actually, because you've got a family history of osteoporosis, as do I. Mm. Whether you've yeah. ever had sort of something like a DEXA scan or anything. No, like that. and I, I I've thought about it a lot since that it would have been great to have had a, a, before a DEXA after. scan before <laughs> and then have have another one now to see what it looks like. But what I do know is I I slipped on ice and broke my wrist. Ooh, probably about 10, 10 years ago, maybe. Mm. And I was told at the hospital then that they thought it was due to, you know, some, some osteoporosis that they saw a little bit of it on the, on the x-ray that, you know, the bone density was, you know, re- reduced from what they would expect to see. So yeah, it would be interesting to see what that, yeah. if it has improved. I'm, I'm sure it has because science says that it does with, with strength training. So I'm pretty mm. sure it has. But having any way that sort of, I guess, increased awareness of your body and the kind of the mm. muscular strength anyway, those kind of things tend to be sort of preventative in terms of sort of yeah. you know, falling. And yeah, that's another thing I think that, you know, we just don't really realize, internalize that it's 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 kind of a preventative thing in that sense, as much as for the sort yeah. of 
the sort of the strength itself and the sort of the the kind of impact on your bone health etc but is that whole it's a holistic thing of like you know you're probably less likely anyway to to have a sort of a serious fall yeah uh, yeah and then if you do that that you're sort of you're you're potentially having a better outcome yeah and you know having trained a lot and built up muscle I now have a lot more muscle around my spine as well in particular if I'm thinking about my previous back problems which are then you know supporting the spine the 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 spine isn't taking all the strain of Mm. everyday function the way it more or less did before whereas now I have muscles that support that spine in 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 all that it does so and I think I mentioned when we were um chatting online there's a book actually that I haven't read yet um called Stronger by Paul Nabel and she also um got into powerlifting mm. sort of later in life so yeah if anyone's listening I think that's a really good one um, I follow her on Instagram as well she's got a really interesting very positive account on there so that's definitely on my on my to read List. Yes, I'm I'm halfway through it at, oh, at the moment. So I, yeah, it's a really, really, really great book. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Good. I definitely need to get that. I've got so many books to read. So <laughs> see the pile <laughs> at some point. It's all going to fall to the floor. <laughs> oh, fantastic, Mona. That that's such a sort of heartening, wonderful, positive story. And um, yeah, I love hearing from women who've made these fantastically positive changes in in later life fantastic role model I'm not I'm not quite sure I'm ready for powerlifting but yeah I definitely need to sort of push myself out of the little comfort zone that I'm in and sort of start picking yeah. up some heavier weights I think well this is it isn't it it's a lot about you know just taking yourself by the scruff of the neck and say well you know I need to do something about this and and just figuring out for you what works and it doesn't it doesn't have to be powerlifting <laughs> no but I but I totally understand that thing about you know the sort of starting with the strength training and getting those yeah. kind of endorphins and and feeling great so yeah, yeah definitely need to to do a bit more of that <laughs> thank you so much for your time for coming on the my, podcast my pleasure you've been listening to the middling along podcast do remember to subscribe to be notified when the next episode is live and why not visit the blog at www.middlingalong.com to sign up to my newsletter as well i do hope you enjoyed listening today if you did i'd be really grateful if you would consider leaving a short review as that helps people find the podcast and helps get it noticed hope you can join us next time goodbye for now